Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. Hi, my name is Adrian Starks, and welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up Podcast. This podcast is for the courageous creators wanting to create a life of meaning, adventure, and fulfillment, all while helping to make the world a better place. I'm happy you're here, and if you're new to our show, make sure to give us that five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Also, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Champion Up. It is always that one idea that could be your breakthrough. It's time to step into your courage and believe the champion in you. Well, welcome everyone today to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up podcast. My name is Adrian Starks and I'm your host and I'm happy to have you here. Make sure you give us that five-star rating and go and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on future episodes coming to you weekly. Also, go to the App Store, type in Champion Up, and get that free Champion Up app for more amazing content in the palm of your hand. Today's show is just going to be me. And I know that you may be thinking, where's the guest today, Adrian? But today, we're going to have this solo conversation between you and I. So we're going to talk today about dreams. Many of you have seen me on Facebook. You've read my posts. You've heard me speak. And I don't talk a lot about dreams as most people do. And it's a reason for this. I find that the word dream is being used a lot, but it's not being acted upon. And so this episode is called Dreams Don't Come True. Now, why would I say dreams don't come true? Well, it's because of this. Dreams don't come true by themselves. They come true when a person decides to be vigilant very watchful for what they're doing and acting upon that dream consistently, meaning they have to have a vision about it. So if you've had something you've been sitting on for a while and you're wondering, well, why hasn't this thing come true? There has to be some type of self-examination to ask ourselves, well, what are we doing that is not getting us the results we want? And so when you have a vision, you become more strategic about what it is you're trying to accomplish as opposed to just saying, I would love to do this in my life and have this big dream and and all these things. I mean, it's great to get us excited, to get us motivated, to get us charged up. However, there has to be something else going on that's driving us, that's keeping us on track to pursue and also to obtain the thing that we're wanting to obtain the most of. You know, Walt Disney a gentleman who really accomplished a great deed with his company, he faced a lot of setbacks and failures. But one quote he used was this about dreams. He said, all dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. If we have the courage to pursue those dreams. So this is an action statement, ladies and gentlemen. You must be active towards your dream. Dreams do not come true until you do. So what is exactly that you're wanting to accomplish out here in life? That is a question you need to ask yourself. And then you have to start looking at what things can you start doing in your life now, those small steps that can get you to where you need to go. You know, four years ago, when I went on this journey of Champion Up, and for many of you who may not know me, I'm the founder and CEO of Champion Up. And I have a, oh, I have a mission of eradicating suicide off of the face of the earth. That's what I want to do. People think I'm crazy for it and great. Yes, I am crazy to do that, but it's a passion I have. 
I also have a passion to help people become courageous creators in their life. To start realizing that you don't find meaning and happiness and purpose out here. You create it. But you have to understand the rules to the systems of how things work in order to create that in your life. And that's what I teach. That's what I bring to the forefront. But four years ago, I had a vision about what I wanted to do with Champion Up. Everything wasn't all in place. I didn't have the podcast. I didn't have the app. I didn't have uh, any of the products I have now. I didn't have any of the people in my life. I just, I was this person on a path on my own. Did I feel lonely? Yeah, I did. However, I did meet the people along the way that I took on that path because I stayed on it. I didn't give up. But four years ago, I remember going to an event in Vancouver, British Columbia. I went with my brother and we were going to see this amazing speaker that I just, I fell in love with this guy. He was an amazing, powerful speaker. We get to Vancouver. It's about a two and a half hour drive. And we walk in this lobby. There's this irate man screaming and yelling. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. You now, why is this guy so angry? It came to, I came to find out that this gentleman was upset because the main speaker that I came to see was not going to be there. So he just grabbed his ticket and he just said, you know what? I'm out of here. You guys should get your refund back. And he got on his bicycle and took off. So obviously he lived locally. This receptionist, she looked at me with fear in her eyes and she just dropped her head and said, are you here to see this gentleman as well too? I said, yes, I am. I'm also here to see other people. And she says, great, you know, please stay. We'll give you front row seats, you know, accommodations. And I said, okay, we're going to stay. I refuse to give up on the dream I had of seeing someone that day. This is what dreams are. Dreams are something that you just don't, it doesn't pop into your lap. You know, you, you're going to have some adversity, some challenges. I call them bumps in the road that you're going to have to get over and go around and go through in order to obtain the thing you're wanting to obtain. My vision was to be on the stages and speak, to inspire lives, to be in classrooms with students to be in front of people, to help them change the direction they're going, to create that meaning and value and achievement in their life. But it takes one step at a time. That day by staying there at that event and not just quitting and leaving because I didn't get what I wanted, I ended up meeting a very special mentor. And she was absolutely wonderful. Her name is Karen McGregor. She took me to the next level of where I am today. I couldn't do that without her. So dreams are necessary for us to really have, to give us that excitement about life. But we must realize that dreams only come true when we do. Think about a building going up in a city. We see these all the time with the skyscrapers. When a building goes up, it doesn't just go up. <laughs> We see parts of it go up in phases, right? There's the foundation that's laid. Then there goes the pipes. Then there's all types of other things that are added. And before you know it, rooms are built, glasses are built, windows are built. And then we have this building. But it happens over time. However, before that building took place, there was a vision about that building. Someone had it in their mind that this building was going to go here for this reason, for this particular cause of serving people. And this building has to be designed in a way that's functional to that. And bit by bit, person by person, day by day, month by month, that building became a reality from whomever had it in their head in the first place. That's how a dream works. You see, a dream has to have a plan. Because a dream will not build itself. This is why there are so many people across the planet, a myriad of people actually, who they just can't figure out why their dream is not coming true. They can't figure out why is this thing not happening in my life? Why am I getting the same results? Well, a dream requires your action. It requires your consistent feedback of what's working for you, what's not working for you, and tweaking it. Finding the right people who can assist you 
with what you're trying to accomplish and making sure that you have a system for yourself. So how can you start to really get that dream to become a reality for you? The first step is standing up for yourself in life. I call it the life stance. Because when you go for something in life, you're going to face some resistance from friends, from family, from associates at work, from anybody that's in your path that you're used to seeing. Because people have a certain, I call it a locked perception of you. They see you a certain way that they want to see you because that makes them feel comfortable. But when you begin to go into a journey of changing your life to what really is meaningful to you, that perception will change and they will try to control that perception. You'll hear these famous phrases. I don't want you to change. You're different now. (laughs) Why are you acting like this? I don't understand that. Do you really want to do that? I mean, that's not going to work. It never does. We hear all these excuses. However, there are just fears that people will place into your minds. But remember, fears are not fear. You have your own fears, but someone else's fears are not yours to own. That's their personal property. Don't take that onto you, into your life. So if you want to really accomplish your dream, I call it accomplishing the vision. You're going to have to have goals. And a goal to me is G-O-A-L. Get out and live. Get out and live. That's what a goal is. A goal takes you out of your comfort zone and it puts you into the discomforts because it's only in the discomfort that you will begin to see things you wouldn't normally see if you were in the comfort zone. That's how champions across the world accomplish things. They get used to being uncomfortable and you have to start doing the same. So how do you take a life stance? Do you begin to, how do you start changing your life? Three steps I'm going to give you here. One is this. Don't ask permission. Start doing the things that you want to do. Now, if you are a young adult, you know, below the age of 18 and you're living with your parents, I encourage you not to take this the way that you really want to take it. Make sure you listen to your parents because you're under their roof. But for an adult, this I mean by this, don't ask permission. Don't ask people if this is possible for you. Stop doing that. You have to start giving yourself permission to say that it is possible. That's the first step. The second step is don't be afraid to say no to the things you say you should say no to and say yes to the things you should say yes to. Because when you say no to the things you should say no to, you open up the door for more things to say yes to. You declutter the confusion because here's the thing. You can't say no and yes at the same time. If you say no to one thing, you're opening up the door to saying yes to something else. And many of us, we don't have the courage to say no to the people we need to say no to because we think we're going to hurt their feelings. We think they're going to get mad at us. We think it could ruin the relationship. And yeah, that could happen. However, do you want to base your relationships on fear and giving people what they want and not giving yourself what you need? That's not a good way to live. The third step to take a stance in your life is don't put yourself into the hands of another person completely. You're going to need people to help you, but make sure you do your research and they are the right people that can encourage you, not criticize you. They can give you a sense of inspiration, not a sense of depression. They can give you reasons, not excuses. Be very mindful of that because when we abdicate our personal power by letting someone else determine what we're going to do with our lives, There's no wonder why there's so many people who wait till they're 65 and up and say, well, where did my life go? You don't want to be that person. You want to start building that dream now. I'm going to go back to this again. Dreams don't come true unless you do. Write that down and think about it all day long. Dreams do not come true unless you do. I remember my first workshop I attended about four years ago. I walked in this workshop and it was a business workshop. And I had this, you know, smile on my face that I still have today. But I walked in with a vision about 
creating something powerful with my business of speaking. But here's the thing. When I walked in, I didn't have a business card. I didn't have a I didn't have any business clients. <laughs> I didn't have a company name. And I thought literally I had no business being in there. But it was the passion, the vision I had about what I wanted to do that got me to where I am today and is getting me a lot further down the road. You must have a strategic plan of what you're wanting to do with your dream. It's great to be excited about it. However, if I was that person just walked into the workshop and I just had this excitement and I didn't make the efforts to learn from other people of how to put into place a system that can allow that dream to become my reality, I would not be on this podcast today. I don't say things to you to impress you, but only to impress upon you the importance of being clear about what you want to accomplish out here. I feel that we all have the ability to accomplish the greatest of things and to leave our own personal legacies. Because I feel that your job is to leave a legacy and not a liability because there's no lie about your ability to achieve the greatest of things. There's no lie about that ability. However, it's just much, but for many people, it's easier to just sit and be comfortable being comfortable and to be safe, secure, and just to do what they've always done. And if that's what you like and your life is no good that way, then great. Continue to live that way. However, many of you, I know they're listening to this. You're not happy with that and you're not satisfied. Neither should you be. Eleanor Roosevelt said the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So if you're believing in the beauty of your dreams, you have to really act on it. We should, you know, act on our dreams like an adult. Plan, strategically look at it, but then have faith and belief in it like a child. That it is going to be something that we're going to experience. When I designed Champion Up, I had a vision about what I wanted to do. That's why there is a Champion Up app right now that you can get for free download. That's why there's a Champion Up podcast that you're listening to. Champion Up shirts and sweaters that are coming out. Many other Champion Up products and services that I'm providing to the world because I realize that when you become true, your possibilities are unlimited. We talk about sky is the limit, and I don't believe that. I've debunked a lot of phrases out of my philosophy that have kept me back for so long. Why would sky, the sky, be the limit when there are footprints on the moon? Hello. (laughs) Why? Why would you think that? And someone could say, well, it's because it's just, you know, you're pushing yourself, you know, to the limit. Ah, here comes another one. Pushing yourself to the limit. You're going to push yourself to the limit of your dream just to see that there's a limit and you're going to back away. I say push yourself beyond your self-imposed limitations because we create our own limits for ourselves. Now, on this journey of mine to this dream that I'm experiencing, did I face setback? Yes. Is it uncomfortable at times? Yes. Do I have fears at times? Yes. Do I face people saying no at times? Yes. It happens to us all. No one's exempt from these feelings. So if you want a dream to come true, you have to ask yourself, how true do you want to be to that dream? And your truthfulness comes from your actions that you do daily. Do you have a set plan each day of what you're doing that's going to take you closer to that reality of your dream? Once again, I'm going to say that I love when people talk about dreams. However, I feel that the word dream is tossed around so much that it becomes vague. It's like saying, I want happiness. I want more money. No, you've got to be more specific about these things. What does a dream really mean to you? Do you see yourself in this dream? And what are you doing? What are you providing? Because a dream is just not about you. It's about what you're giving. That's what a dream is about. So back to the three things I want you to work on. 
in order for your dream to be a reality, meaning you become true to your dream, you've got to start developing some key traits here. The first trait is stop asking permission from people about what is possible for you. Don't go to someone who's never have done what you're trying to do to ask them if this is possible. Start doing it. You know, Nike has a slogan called just do it. And you should listen to that. Just do it. Go out and do it. Two, don't be afraid to say no to people. You need to start saying no to the things that don't matter to you. Someone wants to go out and hang out and you know you need to work on some research for your business, for your dream, for your idea. You need to say no. If you know that this person is negative and they only bring you just ridicule and all this pandemonium in your life, say no. If you need to go to this event to reach out to these people, but you're intimidated because you just are not there yet when it comes to self-esteem, you still need to say yes. If you don't know how to do something, someone's offering you an opportunity and you're scared to do it, say yes. Richard Branson, one of the greatest, I call him courageous creators of our generation. He says that whenever he doesn't know how to do anything, he doesn't, he learns it along the way. And that is the power of an individual who is successful. So start doing the things that you think you can't do. Just start doing it and you'll learn along the way. Three, don't put yourself into the hands of other people. Stop doing that. Don't give people control over you. And so how do you do that when you give people control? Well, you allow their emotions to impact you. You allow their negativity to impact you. You allow their thoughts to impact you. You allow their inability to act on themselves impact you. You just do what they're doing because it seems simple and fun. You have to start being your own individual. Self-autonomy is needing to come back to the human being in order for you to create great things out here in life. And is everyone going to like you for it? No. Is everyone going to understand you for it? No. Are you going to lose some friends in behind it? Yes. However, would you rather have friends that are really friends based on fear because you're giving them what you think they want from you? Or do you really want friends that you know see you for who you are because you're actually being the person you need to be? A lot of the friendships and relationships I see around the world and I've been a part of have not been true because I wasn't the person that I knew I could be because I was being that person out of fear of hoping to be loved, hoping to be accepted. I no longer have that. And guess what happened along the way to this dream of mine? I found friends, associates, mentors, business partners who match the strength that I have now. So when you lose something, it will be replaced. So stop fearing losing things. You are a powerful, creative human being. And whatever you have now, you've created it. You can create a lot more, but it only comes to the person who is willing to actively be involved in what they're wanting to achieve. Your dream will not build itself. It will not come to reality by itself. Your dream only comes true when you do. So to all my champions listening to this particular episode today, I'm not saying that dreams don't come true. I'm saying that they will not come true until you began to start actively working on it day in and day out with consistency. Until then, my champions across the world, I know you can do this. And I encourage you to be that courageous creator in your life. This is the Purposeful Life Show and the Champion of Podcast with myself, Adrian Starks, and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, don't forget to give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the powerful life-changing content on future episodes. Also, make sure to go to championup.net for even more life-changing content. Until then, I encourage you to be the courageous creator in your life.